I want to thank you guys for sending in so many review submissions to youroverwatchplays at gmail.com. I do reply to each and every one with an email response, even if it's just a short tip, even if I can't use it for a video. If you want to submit in your own gameplay to be reviewed, upload a game where you weren't sure why you lost to YouTube and send a link to youroverwatchplays at gmail.com. Now, after reviewing hundreds of games, we're going to take a collection of the most common mistakes that I see players make that you're going to want to look to rectify in your own gameplay if you want to rank up. The very first one is typical of D.Va play, but it goes for every character in the game. Taking too much damage. In every role, in every character you play, unless it's Zarya jumping into damage with her bubble, you'll want to use your movement to avoid damage angles, especially when you're outside of your key effective range. This is important for D.Va and most obvious here, because as our D.Va friend turns the corner to take a look at the entire enemy team, your first thought should always be run away. Not push micro missiles or shoot in some damage because you effectively do no damage at this range. So you trading any damage to your face to deal basically one damage a second to them is a net loss to your team. Instead, you have to be thinking of playing D.Va a lot closer to something like Tracer or Doomfist even. She's more of a bird of prey who sweeps in onto the fight to get her impact, then gets out. Standing around using your mech as if it's a Rhine shield is one of the biggest weaknesses in D.Va play, especially up against an enemy Roadhog. You counter him not by diving onto him, but by baiting your teammates to get hooked, then being there with a clutch defense matrix so they can't follow up on that cooldown, they can get away, then all of a sudden you have a time window where his hook is on cooldown and he is way less lethal then. Then you can pounce him. The entire game works this way, and in fact, this is why so many players struggle to play dive. I mean, it's harder nowadays, obviously, with more things to smash you in the face, but this is also the reason why there's a myth that Zarya counters D.Va. It's because D.Va players fight all the time when they shouldn't be. You can peek around to scout, look where they are, but if it's not time to go in, don't go in at all. This is especially true on the map that we're playing right now, which is incredibly powerful for dive. Here on Oasis, the objective is massive, so that means any of our mobility characters, even just one, can dance around and avoid combat bet while stalling the objective for functionally forever. So slow characters like Reinhardt and Zarya really struggle here up against that playstyle. So remember your goal is a tank. Swoop in to save teammates, commit onto out of position characters, and stall objectives. Don't face tank. Now, the next section is all about Lucio, and more importantly, the lack of Lucio that you see in Ranked. The problem is, Lucio is a bit of an unsung hero, like an offensive line in the NFL. To the untrained eye, you're unsure what they even do, but when you know what to look for, it's painfully obvious the role that he provides for the team. So, Reinzari comps need Lucio. There's a reason why Goats has Lucio in it, and it's a non-negotiable pick, and I'll show you some really clear-cut examples why. Everybody knows man advantage means you have the ability to win the fight, right? Surely, if we have more members than they do, we just press W and win. However, when we look to clips like this on Hollywood, we have to remember the fundamental nature of movement in shooter games. If our Reinhardt turns the corner ahead of our team, which is easy to do when the other slower characters can't speed up to him, even when we have a kill on the enemy Reinhardt, most of us in the backline can't get into space to meaningfully damage or do anything. So because of this, our Rhine Zarya trying to pressure into point aren't at a man advantage. In fact, they're at a man disadvantage. It's the two of them up against the five of the enemy. The rest of us are doing nothing in the back waiting for our tanks to go in, but they can't press W because we don't have speed to overwhelm them. Why? Well, there's another principle about speed boost is that it amplifies a lot of things, but perhaps most importantly, it makes the most use out of damage denial abilities, or what your tanks are actually for. Their shields and barriers and defense matrixes and all that. Look at this attack on Dorado. Even with a man advantage, their healer goes down. Because the enemy is entrenched behind a bunker and natural cover, our shield is getting destroyed, making us be forced to have to back out of a relatively fair fight. It doesn't matter if we pick the enemy's healer, if our healer goes down and we don't have the mobility to outposition the enemy. Whereas, this could be explained with some simple math. If the enemy is focusing our shield and it only is going to last a few seconds, let's say four, will our shield last longer if we speed boost it to close the range or take a longer amount of time to cover the same distance? Well, this should be obvious, right? If you have four seconds of shield and it breaks by the time you get up to the enemy, you're not really at an advantage. Whereas, if it takes you two seconds because you use speed amp to close the distance, well, now all of a sudden you have resources and you're in brawl range. 
stage. This is so crucial that I seriously mean it when I say, without Lucio, Ryan essentially can't play the game up against a number of compositions. He doesn't need healing, he needs speed. Because without speed, his barrier goes down before he's in position, and then he's useless. Now, of course, we can't force anybody to pick Lucio unless we pick it ourselves, then maybe we don't even have a Ryan. But if you come into contact with this yourself, know that it's going to require you to either play less mobile with Orisa and just hope and pray that wherever you set up is good enough, or more mobile with Winston or Wrecking Ball to draw pressure and aggro while securing flanks and pulling attention towards their backline. Because if you don't, simple crowd control effects that just knock Ryan a few feet away severely diminish his impact. The other thing Lucio does is sync up your team. Just like I said before, you don't really have man advantage in certain spots unless your team's actually together. Well, Lucio speeding teammates together applies focus fire naturally because more teammates can shoot at the same thing at the same time. Or even more importantly, sync up their attacks together. Because if you attack at different angles at different times, the enemy can divide and conquer and focus something that attacks out of sync of the rest of the team. If it's not really an option for you to play Lucio or playing a mobility tank won't really work either based on their setup, you actually probably have to play another damage dealer, one that can self-sustain and go take space and be a threat all on their own and or have a big ultimate that's going to bail you out of the situation. And then just in general, defensively speaking, Lucio is one of the best support characters because otherwise there's loads of close range characters like Brig, Reaper, etc. that just run up on your Reinhardt uncontested. They do effective damage if they're really close and they do almost nothing if they're far away. So simply booping those characters away makes space for your Rhine to exist longer than a couple seconds when he gets rushed down. Now, last but certainly not least, mechanics. This is probably the most ignored important aspect of play for the general player base. I suppose it's because Overwatch gets a reputation of being a very friendly game that's easy to play. It's the opposite of that. I think I could make an argument that it is the most difficult shooter game of all time. Now, not every role is as hard as the next, but the sheer complexity of all of them being played at once and the height of the skill ceiling, really, it's immense the room you have to improve at any one of these given roles. So the first example we're going to show is Reinhardt, where our gold Rhine friend here is lacking a very key component of Rhine brawling tech. When close range characters are starting to overwhelm you, or even when an enemy Rhine is brawling you looking to press past you to maybe drop a shatter, you have to learn how to shield jump. And I'll demonstrate what that looks like here. If you just back up and retreat or press forward in a straight line, you move very slowly and it's obvious where you're going. Whereas if we mix in jumping and then in the middle of the jump pop in our shield, yes, we make very small windows of time where our shield is down and the enemy might snipe our support or something. That's unfortunate when it happens, but in cases where that's not a threat or you have bigger fish to fry with close range characters right on top of you like May, you can use this technique to dodge her ability to freeze you or dodge Reaper's ability to overwhelm you as you try to jump backwards and then actually aim your shield at the damage to avoid getting hit. This is obviously crucially important against May because remember, she has to chain the freeze for a while before you actually get frozen. So you can afford to take a little bit of freeze as you transition and try to get away from her. But this is essentially the Reinhardt skill set, being able to do this, brawl, get out, survive, dodge damage, block it when they throw sleep or nade at you. This is what Reinhardt's all about. Now, we could go down every hero in the game this way, but we'd be here quite a long time. That's just one key example to keep in mind that even on characters that you think don't have a high mechanical cost like a tank, there's still a ton of mechanics that you have to master in order to get the max value out of that character. Now, to go a bit more in depth with this, the most severe area I see with the gameplay that you guys have sent in is that there's a lot of flex supports out there that ask me to review their games, and the truth is, you have to realize that whether you're playing Zen or Ana, you're playing a role that, beyond just having smart enough positioning to not die for free, otherwise, you are just an aim turret. So with that being the case, no matter what your tanks are doing, no matter how bad your DPS are, you have the tools at your fingertips to overtake the game with raw mechanical ability. Now, remember, mechanics are everything you input to your character, including movement, ability usage, and all that, but it's more severely in the aim department when we're talking about characters like Ana or Zen. Now, we already have videos on how to improve aim and grind it, but I also want to suggest that if you're struggling to rank up playing characters like this, realize that just like if you were playing Widow and you weren't killing the enemy team enough, if you play a character like Ana and it takes you too long to heal your team or you don't hit enough big impact abilities, there isn't much more to say other than you're just going to stay at the rank you're at, if not drop. That position is full on a carry impact role in this game, because think about it, if you can output more healing value than the enemy, it's like your team 
team has extra players on the team. If you have an extra 1,000 health in a team fight, you're just going to win. And especially at a lot of lower ranks. So if you're at a lower rank and not sure why you can't rank up playing Ana or Zen, playing those support heroes, there could be a lot of things wrong with your play, but almost always, aim is an issue. I've never seen aim not be an issue. Because frankly, even pro players need to improve their aim, right? Everyone has to grind it, but it's a severe limiting factor on some of the harder characters in the game if you can't perform their actions to a very high proficient level. And of course, you can train yourself to have better aim. I suggest trying to buy a bigger mouse mat, lower your sensitivity, grind out in some arcade modes, especially if you learn other heroes that require more precision, like Widowmaker. It'll make Ana feel a bit easier. But also don't trap and limit yourself playing a hero that might not be your best skill set. You may see more value in the movement-based heroes, like Lucio and Mercy, or another role altogether. And even if you think Mercy players can't optimize their play, well, that's not true either. In this example, we see a mercy player who can fix one thing and instantly be a lot better at the character when you're attaching a beam to a target there's no need to look at them you're not aiming at them you're attached to them so because of that every time you attach somewhere you should be looking all around the map to scout out where your next escape route would be if there's any teammates that are low then you need to switch targets or find opportunities to hit a damage amp like if your roadhog teammate hooks in someone damage amping him at the right moment is going to have a lot bigger impact than if you just tunnel vision on one character or another on your team. This was especially true in this Valkyrie right here, which was a good time to pop it. We saved our team, but notice how our Farah flies out into the distance and we never even look up to see what she's up to. She doesn't get healed and then eventually dies to a Moira, which just shouldn't happen. Mercy is a DPS enabler, so be sure to be zipping back and forth between them to amp their damage and give them that reliable top off on their health pool so they can stay active in the fight. Guys, this can be everything for today's video. Thanks for submitting in so many useful gameplays for us to review here today. I hope that all of you found this video useful in your journey to improve at Overwatch. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out and let's know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter. We'd love to say hi to you on there. Pop us a follow. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.